Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over how to rationalize the denominator. Now, what is rationalizing the denominator? Rationalizing the denominator is the process of getting rid of all the roots in the denominator such that your denominator ends up being either just a number, an expression, or a function that is raised to the exponential power of positive 1, okay? And of course, anything raised to the exponential power of positive 1, it's just that thing by itself. So that's basically the process of that, okay? So my goal is to reduce this exponential, I mean, uh, this denominator down to something that is raised to the exponential power of 1. And then I would have the denominator that has no roots in it, okay? But this problem is actually very easy because if you take a look, immediately you can tell that square root of 9 is positive 3. Well, all you have to do is you rewrite square root of 9 into positive 3. Common terms 3 and 3, cancel it out. You're left with just square root of 50. Well, we know that 50 is not a perfect square root number, meaning that there is no smaller integer that multiplies itself twice to give you back 50. Well, let's see. All of the multiplicative factors of 50 are 1 and 50, 2 and 25. And yeah, that's what I can think of. Okay, so your answer is square root of 50 over positive 1, but which is square root of 50 itself. So this is a simplified form of the original expression. Square root of 8, unlike square root of 9, is not a perfect square number. Although I can go ahead and simplify square root of 8 and then I can start rationalizing the denominator. What I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and start rationalizing the denominator, okay? So, I could have done what I'm about to do here in the previous problem, but I realized that if I recognize the fact that square root of 9 is 3 and that I cancel out the common terms 3, that will make it easier for me, okay? But however, you are more than welcome to do what I'm about to do here to the previous problem, okay? So, what, what I'm going to do here is that since I recognize the fact that my denominator is only one term, specifically square root of 8 in this case, I'm going to multiply the denominator by itself. And I'm also going to multiply the denominator to the numerator. So the denominator, the denominator is square root of 8, multiply by itself, and then multiply it to the numerator. So what is that going to leave me? So I would have 2 times square root of 64 times square root of 8. And underneath, I'm going to have, well, let's say I have square root of 8 multiplied square root of 8. Well, these two terms have the same square root. That means I get to keep the radicand 8. And I raise it to the one half plus one half because remember square root is the exponential power of positive one half. Okay, so you get two identical radicands, a, aka the exponential power. I mean, uh, not exponential power, exponential base in this case. You keep the base, you add the exponent one half and one half, which is square root and square root. Well, my denominator in this case is going to be positive a raised to the first. Now, what about my numerator? Well, I'm still in number 2. I recognize that square root of 64 is 8. So, that's 2 times 8. And then times square root of 8. But then again, 8 by itself, it's the same as 8 itself raised to the invisible positive 1 power, right? But take a look. You have multiplication and division only. And you have the common terms. Well, you get to cancel out the common terms. Like that. So you're left with 2 times square root of 8. Okay? Now, unless your teacher is okay with you leaving the answer in the form of 2 multiplying square root of 8, I would strongly suggest 
um, that you continue simplifying it. Why is that? Well, if you recognize the fact that square root of 8 is a non-perfect square numbers that can be rewritten into two of its multiplicative factors, and one of those two multiplicative factors is the perfect square numbers. Well, those two multiplicative factors of positive 8 is actually 4 and 2. Okay, because mentally we know that square root of 4 is going to be 2. So rewriting 8 into 4 multiplying 2, I realized that the multiplication of 4 and 2 are underneath one common square root. Well, I get to use the loss of exponent and separate this square root into two distinct ones. So I would have 2 from here to there, multiply square root of 4, and then multiply square root of 2. So you see, 4 multiplying 2 under one square root, I mean one common square root, is now separated into multiplying two different square roots. One go with 4 and one go with 2, okay? But square root of 4 is 2, so you got 2 times 2, and then keep the square root of 2. Equal 4 times square root of 2. And this is the simplified answer of this one. Alright. Alright, you guys. Um, thank you for watching. Hopefully it's not as confusing. But it's just the idea of being able to mentally recognize um, perfect square numbers and non-perfect square numbers, okay? Perfect square number in this case, square root of 64. Non-perfect square numbers in this case is square root of 8. You know, and as you can see throughout that, right here. And then it is also good to mentally recognize that a non-perfect square numbers or not non not a non perfect square numbers, but some of the non perfect square numbers can be uh, written in the form of the product of two of its multiplicative factors, and one of its multiplicative factors is a perfect square numbers, and the other one is a prime factors. Respectively, in this case, they are four and two. Okay, are right, you guys? Thank you for watching. And I'll post more examples later. Okay, so earlier I said that I would reduce my denominator down to something that is raised to the exponential power of positive 1. Well, I did after I cancel out the common term 8 raised to the first. Because after canceling out the common term 8 raised to the first, my denominator is now left with just the invisible, the invisible positive 1. Well, anything by itself, specifically in this case, the number one here is the same as itself raised to the invisible positive one power, okay? But because anything raised to the first power is that thing itself, in this case, I got one raised to the first power, which is one itself, and anything divided by one it's just that thing itself. So that's why earlier I did not write 2 multiplying square root of a divided by 1. I just wrote 2 square root of a by itself, okay? But if it is more comfortable for you, go ahead and write 1 raised to the first, okay? And then, of course, um, same thing for the consequence steps, okay? For the following steps.